My name is Sharon Hill, and I was a Soul Train dancer from 1971 to 1979. I was born and raised in Galveston, Texas. It's an island surrounded by water, so it wasn't a lot to offer. My mom had given birth to 10 girls, one son. The way I got started and interested in dancing, my dad would dance with my older two sisters, and he would swing dance them, and they were having so much fun. And I must have been about seven. I said to myself, I want to dance like that. My dad brought me out. He put me on the top of his feet and he started waltzing me around. And so that's where I start liking dancing. My older sister, T, she would come home every two years. So the year that she came home, I had just graduated. I overheard her talking to my mom, can I take Sharon to LA? I jumped into the conversation, I was like, Go to Los Angeles for two-week vacation? I would love that. Mom, let me go. And she was like, no. I went to my dad, and I was like, Dad, please tell her yes. It's only for two weeks, please. And he looked at me, and he told my mom, he said, let her go. So I went to Los Angeles with my sister. There was a young man that lived beneath my sister, Cedric Allen. And he asked me, would you like to go skating? Skating. They call it a skating rink or something out in Los Angeles. We don't have that in Galveston. We would skate on the sidewalk. So I go to the ladies' room, and I'm at the sink washing my hands. Here come Patricia Davis. I recognize her from the show at home. I said, hi, and she said, hi. She was asking me where I was from. I said, Galveston, Texas. So she said, you know what? Would you like to go on Soul Train? She don't know if I could dance, if I didn't have two left feet or what. She said, would you like to go on Soul Train? So I said, can you do that? She said, yeah, I can do that because when you're a regular, you can bring a guest. She picked me up, took me to the studio, and it was amazing to see the big, bright lights. People were on the floor. It was just like, oh my God, this is Soul Train. She said, you have to have a partner to dance. So she found me a partner. Two guys was behind the bleachers. It was Lil Joe Chisholm and Tyrone Proctor. He was the skinniest little somebody you ever want to see. In Texas, you know, people are meaty. So I'm looking at him like, ooh, you little, you know? So it was like, okay, it's only for today. Okay, fine, it's only for today. It was the best thing that happened to me. Oh my God, in the 70s, the music that they had to what I hear now. There was the Afros, the Afro Puffs. There was the big platform shoes, James Brown, big bands. It was different from what I hear today. I, I would love to go back to the 70s. We pretty much grab what we can get, you know, put together what you got, make it work. We wasn't thinking about matching. We were more so being connected with our routines. That's what we was focused on. We weren't just dancing, doing your thing. We created routines. used to think I was the whip of Tyrone because our routines were so on, on spot. And it had to be as far as I was concerned because you don't want to look like you don't know what you're doing. I wasn't the whip, but I would make him do it over and over until I thought that routine was the way it's supposed to look. Tyrone was very creative in, in dance. He's a lot of fun. He loved to do the hustles. Oh my God, he's vibrant. Everybody loved Tyrone because 
his spirit. He just had a fun spirit and he made you feel comfortable. He liked this thing that he did later years, but he started it early years. It was called whacking. He taught me how to do it. It's a lot of arm moving and posing and attitude. And so I would say whacking for Tyrone. Sharon here. Tyrone Proctor. Don would have guests on the show, and he had where they would spotlight a dancer. And I think that was like 72. And so this guest picked me and Tyrone as a favorite for that day. And we did a dance called the PA Slaughter. That was fun. I love when Tyrone, I'm so sorry, I'll be just going on and on. But I love when Tyrone and I, when we did the robot, because Tyrone was on point, he was perfect, and it was just, I loved it. I loved it. The show train continues after this very important communication. Beautiful people know true beauty is natural. Beautiful people know true beauty is natural. Wear their naturals proudly. Wear their naturals proudly. As a symbol of pride in blackness. As a symbol of pride in blackness. They had the commercial for Afro Sheen. It became popular because for me, growing up with my complexion, and I always thought, you know, I wasn't cute and, you know, things like that. And I get, I still today, right now, I still get emotional because the way it impacted, because it let women know that they were beautiful. It just made me feel beautiful, even though I didn't know how to do makeup, I didn't know how to do hair. And I'd gotten a lot of mail, like two big old bags of mail saying stuff to me. One girl I remember, she said, Sharon, I appreciate you wearing the red lipstick with your complexion because that's bold to do that. And because you did it, I will do it. It was impacting. Like I said, I didn't want to be this complexion because like at school, everybody with the, the lighter skin girls would get chosen to do everything, you know, or pick to do this or pick for the proms or, you know, it's so, I don't know, I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't feel like this. <laughs> and I shouldn't hold this in, you know, over the years. Growing up, when I would walk home from school, uh, there was some Catholic kids on a bus and they spit on me. And I hated being black, because I thought if I was a different color, that wouldn't have happened. It just created, I didn't like black, you know? But Soul Train let me know that I was, I was beautiful with the commercials of Afro Sheens and stuff like that. There were different complexions and just beautiful people. So once I start knowing how to do this person, this body, and this face, it helped. It just made a difference in me. The touring was, um, Don Canillas had put together five girls, five guys. It was like Don Camelot, Scooby-Doo, Mr. X, Tyrone, and Gary Keys. The girls was Freddie Maxey, Lynn Pickings, Connie Blackino, Patricia Davis, and myself. And we would open the show for The Whispers. Oh my God, we was out there probably like six months. And there was people like Eddie Kendricks and The Moments and The Silvers. Niles Gay and I was able to open the show for The Fifth Dimension. Tyrone and I, Gary Keys, Helena Springs, we opened the show for Joe Simon. I stopped dancing on Soul Train because I wanted to start a family. I love kids, you know, I'm from a big family. There was a story with Chuck Johnson. He called me up and he said, Sharon, this guy, Mark Wood, you know, would like for you to call him. He just told me he's with a band. And all my mind was saying to me was groupie girls. 
I'm not gonna be in that lineup. But Chuck wanted me to get him off his back, so I called. We had a nice conversation. We uh, wind up going out to get something to eat. Mark was a nothing like I thought, because he's a musician. He was nothing like I thought. Mark and I clicked like two peas in a pot. So I was like, you know, if you, if you like it, you gotta put a ring on it, you know. <laughs> so we got married. <laughs> We got married in 82, and uh, we've been together forever and a day. The show has been seen all over the place, all over the planet. They even put a section of Soul Train in the Smithsonian. We have a permanent section there because of Don Cornelius' Soul Train coming on the show, we never thought it was gonna blow up. Cause I was supposed to be there, mind you, for two weeks on a vacation. You know, the way God works, I'm, I'm still in Los Angeles. <laughs> I'm supposed to be here for two weeks. Ah, oh, God is good. <laughs>